flying an apple box Chicago style so you can Hollywood this flag because we need to run a stinger to this juicer and we are burning daylight right before this magic hour. I know the director is gonna have to call Grace and we're never gonna get to this martini shot. So I swear to God, if I have to call a false take one more time and we have to go back to one, I'm going to beat somebody with this gobo. All right, I'm gonna rapid fire through the top 50 slang so you can use this video almost like flashcards. Just rewatch it, go through it, quiz yourself. I'll do it in a way that you can try and guess the answer, but go through it, get these first 50 down and you will be in a good spot. All right, here we go. Glass. Glass is not pieces of glass or a cup. It is the camera lens because it's made of glass. That makes sense. Dirt. Not as in actual dirt, this refers to sandbags. You don't put dirt in sandbags, you put sand in sandbags, but we call it dirt. I don't know why. C-47, not as like an airplane, but a C-47 is a fancy term for a wooden clothespin. Apparently this was a catalog number or just an identifier mark that they used for a wooden clothespin, because I guess wooden clothespins sounded stupid to people back then, so they're like, it is a C-47 not a laundry clothespin. Hollywood it, this is not as glamorous as it sounds. It means your shoulders are gonna be on fire because it means you need to physically hold something in place, like a light or a flag or a palm tree or you know, whatever, because a lot of times the camera crew just kind of wants to see, you know, like what if you just held this here for a while? Or, oh, we just need this light for one shot and uh, there's no reason to put up a C-stand, so congrats, you are the C-stand. C-stands. These were previously called a sentry stand. Nobody calls it that because it's too long, apparently. But the C stand is used to hold different things up. Gobo. This is an arm that extends off of the C stand so that you can get either an extended reach or have a light at an angle or up higher or any of the above. Flags. Not as in country wave a flag, but these are similar. They're pieces of fabric attached to a frame, a wireframe, and this is used to either cut or shape light or sometimes even reflect or bounce light. Don't put them too close to lights because they will set on fire. <laughs> Cutter. This is not scissors or a knife. This is a special type of flag that is used more to create angles of light or to, to really shape it. So it's less about blocking light and more like creating the shape of it. Floppy, not as in like a bunny rabbit, but a large piece of black fabric on almost like a flag, maybe like four by four. And so you have the main piece to block out light and then you have this extra fabric flap that you can kind of move and manipulate around. Duvetine, this is black heavy cloth that does not really reflect light and more absorbs it. A lot of times I've seen it in almost like velveteen or more like a dark velvet. And so use that to wrap things, maybe like a C-stand that's reflecting light everywhere. You just kind of put it so that in the background things that might be blurry or out of focus, it's covered in black. Um, you can also use it to just tidy up things on the side. In AV, it's often used to hide the area where there's just a bunch of cables and computers. Butterfly, not the animal butterfly, but close. It's almost like the opposite of a floppy. It's a very large piece of white satiny fabric and it's used to diffuse a lot of light over a large area of space. Arctic butterfly, this is not at all related to the previous butterfly. An Arctic butterfly is a very expensive sensor brush cleaner that is used to clean the sensor of a camera. I've used one once and it was just really expensive, but I thought the name was cool. A cookie, no, not like a cookie. It's actually called this, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and pronounce it. Nobody calls it that. So it's a cookie, and it's a piece of board or foam core that has shapes cut out of it, so that when you shine a light through, there's texture. Things like maybe window curtains or fake tree leaves, something like that. Apple box, back to our food items, and there's another one in here also. So an apple box is not a box of apples, but it was probably based on one a long time ago. It's a wooden box that you can use for different purposes, things like sitting on, setting stuff on top of, lifting something up a little bit higher. All purpose boxes, they come in full, half, quarter, and pancake. I told you there was another food item in there. A pancake, an apple box, and pancake style. So cute, so cute. But they had a problem with clothespins. Oh wait, we got we got another food item in here, so you can lay it. Chicago, New York, or LA style. And no, we're not referring to pizzas. 
A joker, no, not a funny person, but a type of light. Cheese plate, uh, the industry just loves their food terms, don't they? Nothing to do with cheese. This is a plate of metal that has holes and brackets in it and you can use it to attach other things, mostly for the camera. I've seen it on also audio recorders, things like that, but you can add batteries, attachments, stuff like that. It's just highly configurable. Fly in, no, not flying in somebody from out of state, not related to drones or airplanes. Fly in means that you're bringing something in. So if somebody says fly in a cookie, you're going to take the cookie and you're actually gonna walk it across over to where it's needed. Sticks, this is not a wooden stick. This is the tripod. Why do we say sticks and not tripod when there's really not that much more difficult to say? No idea. Legs, this is the three pole pieces of a tripod, the sticks themselves. These naming mechanisms. The legs are important because if somebody says extend the legs of the tripod, you know that you need to extend out the bottom part of the tripod, not the head of the tripod. Baby, not an infant child, but rather a little miniature tripod. The reason why you might need this is you don't always need to shoot everything at eye level. Sometimes you need to put the tripod on top of a table, on the ground for a low shot, but you don't wanna just set the camera down. You might need to tilt it up a little bit. So you put the baby on the ground. That doesn't sound good. Juicer, this is not a blender for your kale and cucumber tonic. The juicer is the electrician. Gotta juice up those lights. I'm starting to realize that all of this just sounds ridiculous when I say it out loud. It doesn't sound ridiculous when you're on a film set, but it sounds ridiculous when you just say them one by one. Stinger, uh, put the baby on the ground next to the stinger. The stinger is not something that's dangerous. It is an extension cord. Video village, not a vi actually it kind of is. It kind of is a village of videos. This is where you have multiple TV screens that are feeds from the, the live camera, or it might be running dailies or recordings. Basically it's an area to view the footage on a larger screen, whether that has a LUT involved so that you can kind of get a sense of the final product, or you're just reviewing a take to see how it looked. Points, not as in points for Gryffindor. Uh, it's points as in there's something pointy coming at your face. So don't stand up, don't look up, don't move. If you hear points, just freeze, wait for them to pass. It probably means they're carrying like a really long, sharp object and they're passing through and they wanna make sure they don't stab anybody. A hot brick, this, it just doesn't sound good, but uh, it's for walkie talkies. I've never really carried a walkie talkie. I'm kind of spoiled as the director. I haven't had a need to carry walkie talkie. My crew carries it for me. And so a hot, a hockey, a hot brick is a walkie talkie that is fully charged up and ready to go. A dead cat. Oh, don't freak out PETA. There's no dead animals. No animals were harmed in the making of this film set. A dead cat is that fluffy thing that you see on the microphone sticking at the end of the boom pole. And this is to diffuse some of the wind so that, you know, as wind is blowing or, you know, there's air conditioning or fans going on, it's not uh, making that like sound on the microphone. Kind of like this. I don't even know if that came through. <laughs> Barn doors, not as in wooden doors that you can walk through. Barn doors are the four matte metal flaps that go on a light so that you can kind of shape the light direct it or close it up. Whatever you do, do not touch these because they are extremely hot and you will get burned. Squib, these are the little mini explosive devices that you can put in the ground or in people's clothing. It sounds bad, but it's harmless. It's to emulate bullet wounds. So a squib might have fake blood explode. Squibs are kind of cool, but apparently they are messy and expensive. So you want to be careful with how much you use them. Best boy, not the employee of the day, but rather the assistant to the gaffer or the key grip. Striking, no, nobody is about to hit you. Striking means that a light is about to be turned on. Whatever you do, don't look up into the light. You will go blind. Clapper, this does not mean clap, turn on the lights. Uh, this is not clap on. The clapper is for the clapboard, which is the slate. It marks the shot that's coming up next. Spike tape, no, this is not to hunt vampires. This is a brightly colored thin piece of tape that you can put on the ground. It's to help talent find their marks so that they can hit the same point every single time. Really useful for a camera crew if they have to pull focus and hit that spot every single time. The honey wagon, don't let anybody fool you by being like, go get something out of the honey wagon on your first day on set. Nope, the honey wagon is the porta potty. 10-1, this is walkie talkie code in a polite way of being like, I'm going to the honey wagon. 
MOS, nobody can agree on what this means apparently. Mic out of shot, mic off screen, motor out of sync, not quite sure. Basically it means there's going to be no sound taken with this one, so it's just the camera, no audio. An OB light, no, not Obi-Wan Kenobi light. This is the light that reflects in somebody's eyes, so I think these days we call it a catch light. Crafty, this is not the art department. Far from it, this is the food department. So craft services is where you go to get snacks, hydration, a first aid kit, sunscreen, all the goodies. And they better have fruit snacks and seltzer water. Martini shot, no, you do not drink alcohol at the end of the day of the set, even though I'm sure the crew does. But the martini shot is the last shot of the day. It's an indication for the director to be like, hey, we're done, I'm satisfied, we're wrapped, final shot. Uh, and then the rest of the crew can get ready to start packing up. So if you hear a martini shot, congrats, you made it through the day and it's almost time to go home. The magic hour. This is not some magical hour when things happen without control, but it is when the light is beautiful, kind of the golden hour. Um, sometimes the magic hour is kind of towards the end where you get closer to the blue hour. Think Terrence Malick, that, that beautiful amount of time where the light is just lovely. Burning Daylight, also not a vampire reference and not related to the magic hour. Burning Daylight means you are wasting time. Basically saying, well, what's the whole point of us filming if we're just sitting around and the sun's going away and it's gonna be nighttime soon and that's the end of the day? I think this term came from back then when they could only shoot during the daytime because nowadays uh, you'll just film into the night until it's done. Grace. Grace is not praying although I'm sure the director sees it this way. Grace is a way of the director asking the crew, please, pretty please, can we go over time a little bit? I really just want this shot. So this is negotiable. The crew can agree or not, and they can give the director, okay, we'll go 15 minutes into lunch break. Okay, we'll go 15 minutes over time, but you owe us, you owe us. Cheat it. No, you're not actually cheating on anybody or betraying somebody. You are trying to nudge something into the shot and make it look like a previous shot or a desired setup when if you looked at it from real life, you would be like, why are those people standing so far apart from each other? But maybe you're using a telephoto lens and you have to have those people that far apart to give a sense of composition in the frame. Or you have to say something like, oh, well that car was in the shot before and now it's not. So we're just gonna kind of cheat the camera a little bit this way and the shot looks the same, but now you can't tell. Dirty, not related to dirt, also not an inappropriate term. Dirty means you're having something on the edge of the frame. So for example, in over the shoulder shots, you'll see a lot of the shoulder just kind of dirtying the frame, or you might have something like a little bit of foliage on the edge, you know, just a little bit of the wall there, the door frame, just something to give a sense of depth. Pick up, no, you're not actually picking up anything off the ground. What you're doing is saying, hey, these are some shots that we didn't get to. Now we gotta do pickup shots in order to complete this set of shots for the scene. Back to one. This means that everybody go back to start, go back to the original location. That's Dolly, that's camera, that's the boom operator, that's talent, everybody back to one. Rolling, not rolling as in people are rolling down a hill or you're rolling something up. Rolling means that the camera is recording and same with audio. So you better be on your best behavior and you better be quiet. Stand by, not somebody waiting on the side, but rather the entire crew waiting for something. A lot of times you'll have standby for sound, which means there's an airplane going overhead, screwing up your shot. There's a train going by, there's a car alarm, there's dogs barking, or maybe there's a, somebody who's trying to uh, photobomb you in the distance and you're like, standing by for a random pedestrian in the background, standing by. Print, my favorite term as a director, we're not actually printing something out on a printer. What we're saying is print the film, which means that we like this take, it looks good, we're keeping it. Room tone, room tone is not the noise within a room as you would think, it is the, uh, the ambient silence of a room. So when you hear room tone, everybody freeze and hopefully you aren't frozen in a position where you're on one foot or really uncomfortable because you can't move for like 60 seconds. And so some of the greatest photos that you see are everybody just freezing and uh, you get some really hilarious shots. And the last one, wrap. You're not wrapping anything like saran wrap. Wrap means that you have completely finished filming for the day. It's a wrap. 
it's time to pack up. The director is like, whew, the talent can go relax. Camera team can break down the gear and you are ready to pack up and call it a day. Good job. Why don't you in the comments make the most ridiculous sentence that you can. You have the advantage of using text instead of having to say it out loud, but I'd be curious what you can generate. So comment below, make sure to go to Patreon to check out the full list of all 100 lingos. All right, that's it for this one. I will see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe. And in the meantime, go make a film. Use these lingo terms and confuse everybody. <laughs>